Hi everybody, welcome to Missy's Imaginings. I hope you had an awesome Christmas and I wish you a very, very happy new year coming up uh, next Tuesday. <laughs> so yeah, welcome back. I hope you've had a great time and I had a wonderful holiday. So I thought, well, we'll go over a few things that I have and then um, kind of move through the video and I also would like to put together the uh, coat, the suit coat for Doctor Who. So we'll get there. But first of all, for Christmas, my daughter spoiled me. So I'll show you some things they got me. So the first thing was uh, a Simplicity paper doll set. So evidently, Simplicity now has their retro designs in lots of product merchandise, which I'm just a huge fan of old vintage looks and retro looks. So they got me this paper doll set, which is so cute. And on the back you can see there's um, one, two, three, four, five designs and the doll. But what was really cool, let's see if I'll, I'll go ahead and take this part and open it. So it opens up into a nice folder, which is really cool. And I wonder if this is blinding here. Let's turn, there we go. So it opens up into a nice folder. And what was really cute, let's see if I can do this without dropping everything, is the doll has a front and a back. Isn't that cute? So cute. And then the fashions are designed. So here's the back and the front and they fold on this line from the shoulder to the elbow so that it will actually wrap around her. So the fashions are all designed with front and back as well. Isn't that cute? So I just love it. I just think it's so cute. So yeah, so for somebody who loves paper dolls and you know I make a lot of paper dolls so she found that. and. Uh, that was one of my Christmas presents, and I love it. So we'll fold it back up here, see if I can put that back together. Then uh, my youngest got me a measuring tape. This is also from that Simplicity line. So there's a little retro uh, fashions there, and a really cute little zipper pouch. Simplicity, I love it, lots of designs. So I love this, lots of designs there, and a little hat box, I don't have a hat this small, but the inside also has a design, but those are the cutest things. And then Savannah also uh, got me a pair of vintage scissors from the Simplicity, there, will that show up, from the Simplicity line. So they're really cool little butterfly scissors when you open it up. Let's see if I can do it without cutting my fingers. So it'll look like a butterfly. So very cute little thread snippers, very cute. So, and then, oh, this was really adorable in the, the little sushi food line. Let's see if I can click it. Is a little lantern. Isn't that cute? I love it. I just love it so much. So yeah, I she had one on her shelf and I saw it and I said, oh, this is so cute. Where'd you find that? And she said, oh, she just kind of brushed it off, you know friends got it with me you know with some oriental stuff that I have and I said that is so cute and then it was in the package for Christmas so it's adorable so there's the little lantern so that was a lot of the fun for Christmas let's see what else is new oh I was able I posted on the blog a couple times I don't remember if I talked about it but my uh, industrial machine takes a specialty kind of needle of course it does so I was able to go to our local uh, sewing machine store and with some of their help looking through some of the paperwork we investigated and we got some needles that will actually work in my industrial machine. So with that, I got in the mail, I ordered and got in the mail 100 needles. And let's see if I'll turn this back on. I just feel like I might not have enough light so I probably made it worse but there we go. So I got 100 needles. So we'll see if these will actually work in the machine, and if so, then it'll be great. I'll be stocked up. They did look like they were going to match, so now I have to put those in my machine and test it out, see if they'll work. But those arrived, so I have lots of needles for the industrial machine. And that brings us to my arrival. Have you been waiting for the arrival? I posted it on, on one of the Facebook groups, I guess, so a couple people might be waiting. But I went to the Miro Doll website, because I have a band head, I have an Akaji 
doll head ban that I got a while ago. Um, he was supposed to be white, but when he got here, he's not white, white. He's just a very, very light flesh color. And I was going to use it on another project. And his head's kind of hard to remove. So, But he's a very large head, so he needed a large body. So I went to Miro Doll and ordered the 60 centimeter male who arrived. So this fella is here. And so he arrived in really good shape. And here he is. So this guy is the 60 centimeter Miro doll, like kind of buff guy. He's got, you know, he's real buff and thick through the chest. But I think the head is going to look great on this body because it's big enough to support a head this large. And then, of course, because the head is a little bit lighter, it's not really going to matter because he'll have a face up that'll color up his head. I just don't like it when the body is lighter because then the head just looks too dark and it doesn't fit. But when the head is lighter, you can more easily color up the face to match what the body is. So the face looks a little lighter than the body, but I think it's going to be okay. So this fella, I'm not sure who he'll be yet, but I just had the head and I thought, okay, so I want to move forward with that guy. I thought it was going to be yesterday, but he they actually arrived on Monday. So they arrived really early. It was kind of funny because I got an email on Saturday or Sunday that they would be here on the 28th. I say they because I haven't got that far yet. But then they arrived the next day. So yeah, the shipping was great. So I'm happy to have this fella here. And then I can start working on putting him together and getting his head done and and I have too many dolls. I know y'all say that's not even possible. But I saw a doll, Hugh or Wrong, by Angel Studio, and she would be probably my dream doll. She's so pretty. Of course, you know, she's been sold out for a long time, probably a good year, if not months and months. And um, so by the time I saw her and saw pictures of her, she's, you know, long gone. And so I looked and looked. I thought, well, what could I do? And I decided when I was looking through the Miro uh, website, they have a little fourth scale doll. And her name was, is Candy. So she's little. And I thought, well, her face shape and the sculpt looks similar. It's not exact, of course, but it looks enough similar. It has enough of the aesthetic that it might be worth a try. So I ordered the little face. It's the little candy face. And then I looked at the bodies for the fourth style and I didn't like the new one. Um, it looks very juvenile, which I mean, if you want a you know, young teenager, that's fine. But I wanted one of the more adult shapes. So I ordered just their standard one-fourth size and she just seems so small to me after I'm used to this size and bigger now and even Evangeline you know is almost as tall and so I'm not used to the quarter scale dolls but so she just feels so little to me <laughs> so but I like it it feels nice um she's uh, got good posability she can hold the poses and hold her knee up so and she doesn't even have the head on yet so that'll kind of tighten up the stringing as well and so yeah and if I let's see if we do the double joint if we pull the joint out the elbows might click a little but her elbows can kind of come up there but some of that could be cured with some wire I'm sure to uh, give a little bit more stability and getting those peanuts out of there, there. so her hand could easily touch her face. So I was very pleased and this is one of their just uh, standard shapes. Uh, they have this and then the 60 centimeter shape is the same and they've had that for ages. I'm going to see if I can do a little face up to resemble that beautiful doll and let's see if I hold her over here I'll maybe put a picture of the favorite. but. 
I just can't leave it up very long, I guess. But that's the one that I would want. But, yeah, long gone. Very sad. So we'll see. We'll see what happens, how creative I can be, and if I can kind of recreate the look of that doll. So I have a body to try it with, and, and uh, there we go. We'll try it with this little gal, because this little gal, I think, ended up for the whole doll being about $80. So... So there we go. So there's our Christmas arrivals that were just a little after Christmas, but not too bad. So that's who's arrived and what we're working on as far as dolls. And uh, so that'll be fun. I'll show you progress and we'll keep you up to date. But today I wanted to work on the coat for Doctor Who's suit. So I have it all cut out. This coat that it's already on the website so if you want the pattern it's already there but I'm gonna try something new because on the jacket I wanted the back to rather than having a pleat in the back of the coat on the back seam I wanted to have two on the sides and in order to do that I needed to have a seam there so there's an actual side panel that will go underneath the underarm and then attach to the front like so. Instead of having just two pieces, one for the front and one for the back, there's three so that this will actually be sewn down to here and then there will be a pleat um, in the bottom of that coat in the back. Which meant because of the way this is put together, the seam is not directly under the arm it's going to be more towards the back. So on the sleeve of the coat, you'll notice if you look at the pattern, it's got that extra swoop in the cut. So it won't be sewn just like a regular one and then sewn. That shoulder edge is actually going to have to match that curve. So I haven't really done that before, but I wanted to try it just to get the look that I wanted. So that's going to be our project today, is to go ahead and put this coat together so that Doctor Who will have his entire suit intact. So we'll fire up the machine and get to sewing. Alright, so for the coat, I have my sleeve pieces and the back pieces, the underarm pieces, the collar pieces, the back facing and the front facings and the front. So what I'm going to do to start is connect the facing uh, together, the front facings to the back facing at the shoulder, and then serge around the edge that will be the raw edge once it's inside the jacket. So I'm going to connect those and serge that edge. Then also, because the underarm seam, I'm going to see how it will work to go ahead and to finally uh, do that final seam under the arm although it's moved. So in order to make sure that that looks good and that my pleats look good, I'm also going to serge the edge of the side back and the underarm edge that goes towards the back because I want that finish so that when they're sewn together, let's put it on the paper here, so when these pieces are sewn together, they're only going to be sewn, so we're going to line them up, to about here. And then that seam, of course, I want to be able to turn this side in and then turn this side in so that I'll have those finished edges on my pleat. But I don't want this edge of the fabric to be raw, so I'm going to serge that connection as well. So whenever I have um, like a back seam or something that I know I'm going to put the pieces together but the seam has to open because part of that will show, then I like to serge those. The other edges, so the front and the side, the side that will be connected to the front, I'm just going to sew and serge the whole thing when I sew it because that's not going to open. But because it's going to open on the back, I want to pre-serge and pre-finish that edge. So I hope that makes sense. So that's what I'm going to do first, is all my prep work. The prep sew is now all done. So these edges are all 
surged and ready to go. So next I'm going to connect the underarm pieces with the back pieces. So the shorter point of the underarm piece is what connects to the back. So this piece will be connected here and this piece will connect here with right sides together. And I'm going to sew only as far as about three inches from the bottom so that that will remain open for my pleat. Um, so only from the like three inches to the end of that piece up to the top. I'm going to do that on both of those. Also, I went ahead and surged the edges of the sleeves and turned those up and they do have a little bit of a, you can tell where the dent is because I wanted to have a little bit more of a facing inside the shirt sleeve. So I surged that edge and I'm going to hem those uh, shirt sleeves so they'll be ready to go. So those are both prep sewn and ready. And then the next step I'm going to do is the collar will be put together with right sides together like so and then the curved, well the, the points are the edges of the collar so I'm going to sew up across that top edge and then down this side and then I'll flip that right side out so I'm going to put the collar together and then I also have the facing is all done and ready to go so I put those together at the shoulder seams and finished the outside edge of the facing. So next, like I say, we're going to actually hem the sleeves, put the back pieces, connect them to the underarm pieces, and go ahead and sew the collar. diagonals and then I'm going to use this tool when I turn the collar right side out. And then once it's turned and uh, the corners are out then I'm going to go ahead and press that and I'm going to top stitch. Well maybe I won't. Maybe I won't. Um, usually I top stitch, but I don't think I want to on this collar. I'm just going to press it. So I'm going to turn those tips so they're nice and pointed. And then I'll just press that. There we go. So now I'll press it into place. And I went ahead and notched right here. Um, there we go, so it'll show. I notched right here, and then when I put uh, the back together, this will match up with the back center seam. So it just gives me a way to make sure my center is notched so that it's it stays in place where and sometimes pins tend to want to move on you. And now that that is pressed, I'm going to go ahead and baste that bottom edge. And with my notch in place, I'm just going to pin it to kind of hold it uh, so I can baste that with uh, fairly large stitches. Let's see. Um, so we're just going to do that to hold it in place. And I'm just going to sew not quite a quarter of an inch because I want uh, I don't want that seam to show. 
so I'm going to be slightly uh, inside the seam allowance uh, just to make sure that that thread doesn't show on my finished garment but I want to keep those edges together and I'm, don't worry about back tacking or anything like I say because it's just stay stitching to hold that together and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to snip at like quarter inch intervals just to where that thread is so that will make it easier to go around the neckline if those are snipped so I'm just snipping right to the to that thread so then they'll pull apart that'll show so that collar is ready next I'm going to put the back together So my center back I'm going to sew together. So I'll sew that and I'll serge it. Then I will put the front to the back at the shoulder seams and then I will put in the collar. So that's my next step. together and here on the sides because I've got the pleats here on each side I only sewed you know down to here and then turn that seam allowance in so that the edge of that pleat is nice and finished so what that means is now this seam allowance tends to want to turn this way so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to snip the tip off of where that point was because it's not really affecting anything. I'm going to do that on both sides and I'm also going to snip right about here where those meet just so that I have that seam allowance so this seam allowance will be towards the sleeve but then it'll come down onto here when I put that sleeve in otherwise I don't really have a seam allowance for the sleeve because it would turn funny so hopefully that will work. So I'm just going to snip off those tips just snip that a little bit so it lets me play with that seam allowance a little bit. I also uh, press the seam allowance of the shoulder towards the back and then on the the back center I pressed it towards the right side. Um, it doesn't really matter on that part but these ones I wanted open just because I want to open that right here for the pleat in the back. So now We'll put the collar on, so we're going to match that little notch to the center back and then go around. I'm also going to stay stitch around the neckline um, just around there and then clip so that this will straighten out easier, which will make putting this collar on easier. So I'm going to stay stitch here on both the coat and on the facing and then just clip to the thread like I did before and then I'm going to go ahead and baste that collar in and then I will add the facing let's see if we put our coat like this so once the collar is sewn in place then I will also uh, add the facing that will be sewn in and I'll sew up the front, around the neckline, and then down the other side of the front. And that will get all the jacket put together, and then we'll just need to put in the sleeves.
pinned in, what I want to make sure of is that the edge of this collar right here to the edge of the front, I want to make sure that's the same as on this side where the edge of the color is to the edge of the front. So, measure there. And here, and it's the same. So that way it's just a way to double check that your collar is centered. So when you base that in, you just want to make sure that you're only going over the seam allowance and not catching any of these folds of the back and the front pieces up into the collar. You want to make sure that you don't have that, that it's only the edge of the collar that you're sewing. Sometimes that can get a little tricky and you end up with little pleats. So here again I'm going to sew slightly inside a quarter of an inch um, just so that when I put my final facing on I will do the full quarter inch seam. And here I'm not going to back tack because I'm just stay stitching it in place um, because I want, if I make any mistakes, I want to be able to take that out easily. Okay, I'm pulling my coat pieces taut so that I don't have any pleats along that edge. Okay, now I'm coming to another shoulder. So I'm going to make sure that's all pulled snug so I don't get any pleats in there. So it's out of the way. So here again, it's just stay stitching. So this is just kind of a, a way to um, make sure everything's in place before you put that facing in. So what I want to do is check it around this edge and make sure I don't have any pleats in my fabric. Okay, no, no pleats there, no pleats. Okay, oh, and it looks like I might have a tiny one here. Yeah, just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a seam ripper and where that tiny little pleat is, I'm just going to break that thread. With everything pinned, I'm going to sew from the bottom of the front up across the collar and then back down the other front, being sure that I'm keeping everything pulled away from the seam to avoid pleats. sure I don't have any pleats in the jacket so that looked like it was going to be but it's not okay 
make sure I don't have any pleats. I'm not so concerned with pleats in the facing because it's the facing, but you don't want pleats on the actual garment. So I'm looking for pleats here. Looks like everything's going to lay flat. So now I'm going to press that and press this so that when it's all laying, laying flat, turn the facing towards the inside, then your collar will stand up. Turn that in there. So it should look like this. So we'll go ahead and press that and get a better view. The next step we're going to do is to actually put in the sleeves. So I'm going to run a basting stitch along the top edge and slightly gather that and then I'll straighten it out again as I'm putting it in. But here, because it's going to be a weird curve, I'm not exactly sure how this is going to work. So I'm going to stay stitch along the seam allowance of the sleeve as well and then I will attempt. <laughs> We're going to sew from this tip down. So this tip will match. We'll match that up and then this seam will come around and then the shoulder will roll as we go all the way to where that shoulder seam ends. And we're going to attach that sh uh, sleeve on both sides. And then what we'll do is start at the sleeve and then sew down the sleeve and then down the sides. So that's what we're going to do next. I've never done it with exactly this much of a curve, but we're going to try it. <laughs> finished and I was a little nervous because of the amount of curve um, to run it through the serger so I didn't try to serge real deep but I was able to get that through the serger fairly simply so that my inside shoulder seam will be finished so I wanted to do that before I actually sew down the side seam and it it worked pretty well so yeah I thought it might be really hard but uh, you just kind of have to fool your serger machine into thinking you're sewing a straight line and this actually was pretty fluid going through there so yeah that was a good choice that way my shoulder seam will be finished so now I'll go ahead and put the sides together <laughs>
So once the sleeves are on, I went ahead and started at the sleeve edge for my serging because then I could start and tuck that thread around and serge and have a nice clean edge on my sleeve so that I don't have any tails that I have to deal with and just serge down so that that front side is finished. And I do that on both sides. Then the last part I'm going to do is I turn the facing right side to right side, the front facing, and I'm going to serge from the, the edge out so that my tail will be inside because this is going to be flipped right side out. So then the tail that I need to deal with on the serging will be inside that corner, so I'll tie that off. And then once that's in and flipped out, then I'm just going to turn in my pleat and then turn that up and put a hem. And my hem will start here, I'll go across. Then I'm actually going to top stitch, once that's turned, there we go, I'm going to do the hem, but then I'm also going to come up for that pleat and just stitch it in place, come across, then down the next pleat, then I'll hem the back, then I'll come across, turn that pleat in, top stitch here, come around, and come again, and then uh, hem that, because then once this is turned out, then that'll be all finished. And once we get that hem taken care of, we will go ahead and turn it right side out. first because I like good news first is I really like the back but it does need to be broader for his shoulders it's a little narrow through the shoulders but I like the way the pleats look in the back to have the side pleats rather than a pleat in the back so I will probably put a little bit more curvature on the sides to tuck that in just a little bit to give him a little bit more of that V shape and broaden the shoulders so I like the back the bad news is the front, well it's not totally bad news, but it just, it needs to be fixed. So the sleeves, I had a weird time getting them in, and I think the answer is that my sleeves on the front need to be wider. So if you try that pattern, I'm going to take it off the website, I'll make some adjustments to it, and the sleeves need to be long, that shoulder edge needs to be longer in the front to make it fit right. So I had to take some out and the seam allowance was kind of weird. I got this one to kind of fit. Also I think the front needs some darts in the front because it's a little flat in the front which I don't like. And here again it's not broad enough in the shoulders. So this jacket I probably will scrap. I'm not going to keep it. I'm not going to waste buttons and hardware snaps on it. Um, I'm not going to put the shoulder pads in it because it's not wide enough. So anyway, I want to, when I'm doing a new pattern, I want you to know what I fought with <laughs> when I tried to put it together. So that's the issues I found is that the sleeves weren't wide enough. I mean, I got it to work, but it doesn't work as well as I'd like. Um, and it could stand being a little bit wider in the sleeves anyway because it was kind of hard to get the sleeves all the way down given that he already has on a long sleeve shirt. So it was hard to get it to fit. But it is a very workable pattern, but it needs some adjustments. So I will make the adjustments and repost it on the website, on the blog, with a little tag so that you know it's a new one and that I'm taking the old one out. And we'll fix that. Also, the lapels need to be wider on the front. So it needs to have more of a curvature out so that when you fold it back, there's a decent lapel. I don't mind these big collars on the 
the actual collar, but I'll probably narrow that a little bit. So I'll narrow this collar, but widen the lapel. I think that'll look better. And put a couple darts in the front, broaden the shoulders, widen the sleeves. And then I think we'll have a working jacket. So like I say, I'm not going to keep this one. I do have more fabric so I can make the adjustments and make it the right thing. But so anyway, he's making progress. So he will soon have a coat, but he just needs, you know, the broad shoulders to come out so that the shoulder pads will fit in the coat. And uh, it could be longer. It's a little short, so I'll lengthen that as well. Um, so yeah, so it's a work in progress, but that way you can see kind of how I did put it together and what adjustments we need to make. So, and also the good news is he now has his jointed hands and they have been wired so that he'll be able to hold a sonic screwdriver when I make the sonic screwdriver. So that part's done. I might go ahead and blush those a little bit just to make them look a little more realistic. If you've already got the pattern, you can have fun with that. But um, on the blog, the next time I post, I'll change that out. So that's on making a coat. Um, but other than that, it went together well. Like I say, it does need a couple darts in the front just to kind of give that some shape so it's not so flat looking and then it'll overlap and then I'll put the little pocket flaps on it and uh, yeah but I like the back I like how the back looks it could just be a little bit wider for him so in spite of him being a pretty skinny fellow we still need a little bit more width in our jacket so that's the scoop so continue working have fun sewing and I'll see you next time